Welcome to Minority Focus. I'm your host, Jimmy Moore. Appreciate your, your tuning in there. While you're tuning in, check out some of these other stations that are on Paducah, too. It's a variety of interesting things that you could be checking out. Want to get into naming off the list? Go to www.paducah2.org and check out the list of entertainment for you. Uh, Barry Craig's Notebook and, uh, of course, Pastor Anthony Walton's show that comes on. It's, this is a pretty tough station. I hope you, you, you check out some of the other things that are available for you to, to watch. <coughs> and today, when, you, when you're thinking about riding around Paducah on the city buses and getting to and fro where you need to go, keep in mind that the man behind the scenes is our guest today, the executive director, Mr. Arthur Boykin. Thank Welcome. You to the show. Well, thank you, Mr. Moore. I appreciate, appreciate you, you coming. Thank, well, thank you, you very much. I, I'm particularly grateful when, when busy people take the time to, uh, to come on the show, and I know you are a busy man. More right. so the last <laughs> couple of months have been immensely busy. Are you all before. settled in now? You all settled in with? Each and every day, we're, I'm getting a little more settled in. Um, it, the transportation, uh, public mass transportation, is, is a little different. Uh, arena for me but that makes it exciting uh, it's a it's an opportunity for me to uh, to, to grow more right. and that's uh, I always look forward to that right. did, you, did you did you did you get a chance to prep uh, very much or did you just come in running uh, I came in running uh, some of my prep was you know when you're going to pursue any job you need to know a little bit uh, a little more about that job for so sure. I took the time sure. prior to even going to to investigate, uh, to learn more about what mass uh, transportation was about here in, in McCracken County and Paducah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the board was very, very forthcoming uh, with me and telling me, uh, outlining and detailing some of the challenges that were there uh, at, at uh, Paducah Transit. And I was very appreciative of it. And I've just never been an, an individual to really run away from a challenge. I'm always <laughs> looking for a good challenge. Right, and I'm sure this has to, has to be one up. You know, people think about, um, about running an operation like this, you know. And, and uh, the average person, I'd say, all they can see is someone saying, this bus goes here, this bus goes there, et cetera. So much more goes into it. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's considerably more. Um, for the average uh, Paducan and McCracken County uh, citizen, what they, when they think of Paducah Transit, I think the majority of them see the fixed route buses. Of course, those, those are the bigger vehicles, and they think that that's what we do, and that, that certainly is an important part of what we do. Uh, by no means is that all of what we do. And um, you know, one, that's one of the challenges that I have before me is to make McCracken County and Paducah aware of the many services uh, that are offered by uh, Paducah Transit Authority. Right. Right. Mention, mention a few of those, if you would, other than the buses. Well, okay, certainly there there are the bus bus routes that we run, and though there there are fixed there are four fixed routes with a fifth that runs part of the year, and that's our, our trolley service that runs from right. the first of April through the the first of September. <laughs> However, the uh, a big segment of what we do, I put it under term it non-emergency non medical transportation. Uh, when you have individuals that don't have free transportation or that need to get to dialysis or they're going to vocational rehab or they're needing medical uh, attention that's non-emergency non but it's out of town, whether that be Bowling Green or getting a young kid up to COSER's uh, hospital there in Louisville. But that is a lot of what Paducah Transit does that sort of goes on behind the scenes. Right, so you got to look a little further when you see a city bus pass and know that so much, so much more there, is, uh, is going on. That's a, a, exactly correct. You know, <clears throat> when you think and, and, and of the average dialysis patient, I believe, uh, dialysizes three times a week. And, uh, there, you know, there are quite a there are number of instances where after dialysis, and I've had the fortune or misfortune of having very close relatives to, to have to go through that, they don't feel like climbing back in a vehicle and necessarily driving themselves back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so 
to be there and be there uh, to pick them up, transport them to where they're receiving their treatment, and to be there timely to take them back home. And for a lot of our, 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 our customers, our clients, you know, a relationship certainly builds between the client and, and the driver who happens to go to pick them up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one story that, uh, that happened just a, a couple of weeks ago, one of our drivers who has a routine customer that they were going to pick up, when he went to, uh, to pick the, the, the customer up, he noticed that she didn't come to the door like she normally did. And it's just through his alertness that he called 911, the proper agencies, and went in and actually found that customer, that citizen in distress, laying in the floor. Right. You know, and it's just, it's that kind of relationship also that, that further enhances what Pats does within this, the McCracken County and Paducah community. Right. Of course, with the, with, with the buses, you just, just get on, and um, the service that you're talking about doesn't necessarily pick up people on the street. Just a matter of a phone call. Yes. To set that sort of... A and the buses play, play uh, the buses do play an important role. Uh, what, what I think uh, we need to, uh, needs to be realized is that it is a not, it's a not-for-profit organization. I, I dare say that I don't think that you could get a ride and our, our fee structure for riding the bus is that first, if you're under five years of age, it's free. If you're over 70 years of age, it is free. If you're 55, it's 50, 55 or older, it's 50 cents. 50 cents in today's market. Right. Uh, the <clears throat> normal fee for riding the bus, one dollar. Right. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. I know, uh, you know, I can get around Paducah for that, uh, no, not 60. <laughs> uh, for that age, uh, it's amazing that I can do what I want to do in the course of a day for a couple of dollars, literally yes. a couple of dollars. Get from one end of the city to the other side and back for a dollar. And, and that's, that's tremendous. It's tremendous in today's time. One of the, th I've had, I wanted to extend an invitation out to some of our officials so that they, so that we might, they might garner just how important it is. And my invitation is gonna be simple. I, I know that they're very busy, but I want to extend an invitation out to them that if they can see time in their calendar to take three to four hours out, one any day, and I'd like for them to come. The I will, we'll pay for the ride, but I want them to come and, and, and get around Paducah using the mass transportation. Right. I, I think it certainly will add a lot, of, a lot of credence and credibility to just how crucial of a service it is. Um, you know, not everyone has the luxury of going out in their garage and hitting their remote and, sure. and climbing in their vehicles and getting to point A, B, and C and wherever they're around Paducah. Uh, Pat certainly does. <coughs> Another aspect that I think goes, that, that's not mentioned very often is they they used to call it dollar ride. It is actually demand and response. Right. Pats will pick you up. You don't. I mean, if, if you say that I, you choose not to ride the fixed route buses, uh, you know, with 24-hour notice, uh, you can simply pick up the phone, call 444-8700, and schedule your trip. Uh, that, you know, w they will come to your door, pick you up, take you to where you need to go. And I, I'd say, in my opinion, at, at a nominal fee structure, sure. it's a dollar and 75 cents per mile. Right. I've, I've, I've ridden some, and I, and, and I enjoy it. Uh, some people have different kinds of um, demeanors. That's, that's normal, that's natural in life, period. But I say it that to say, uh, some of the buses, um, some of the bus rides that, that I've been on, the drivers are wonderful, happy people. They make the ride enjoyable. <laughs> I, I, I got on a, a, a bus once and um, Valentine's Day mm -hmm. and saw two or three customers bring the, the driver Valentine's kisses, candy, or whatever it is, because they like them, simply because they like her. And, and that's a tremendous uh, uh that definitely is, and that's one of the messages that uh, I'm trying to communicate to all of our coworkers is that, particularly the drivers, they they are re they represent Pats. 
Um, quite often, I'm behind the scenes of uh, the, the office manager, the HR, the, the operations, all of it, we are behind the scene. The people that the clients encounter every day who are our drivers, <laughs> That is pets to them. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we encourage them, whatever may be happening in their personal life, that they keep that in the forefront of their minds, that they're, they're, they're representing Paducah sure. Area Transit. For sure. And, and, and certainly they can take a situation where an individual may be having a bad day or just not feeling well, and, and they can bring some, some, some relief, some sunshine, some gladness into that situation just by the attitude the, that they d display. Right, I just listen to some of the drivers as passengers get on, greeting them by name. They know them, yes. Uh, over and over. They, um, <coughs> why don't you go here, why don't you go there? Someone asked a few minutes before the show, go out in the, why don't you go out in the county? You're getting all of that. Why don't you have the buses go here, there, and all that sort of thing? Well, the, uh, and it's unfortunate. We, we had to modify our, our, our operational hours. Um, Previously, last year, the buses ran from 6 o'clock in the morning until 6 p.m. Uh, certainly, you know, with, with having to do more with less, we understand that everyone, you know, the dollars are there. It's, it's been hard economically. Uh, and that, that impacted PATS as well. Uh, with reduced fundings, we had to uh, attempt to service the majority of clients with the dollars that we had uh, through, you know, th uh, through some of our own faults. Our, our, we have lost some dollars through the county. Uh, uh, we have been, and because the city is having to, to look at all areas that they support, uh, our budget has been reduced um, by the city. And on the surface, you, you, you think that that's minimized a, a, when it, a, actually it's, it's exaggerated because every dollar that we lose locally, we also lose a dollar of grant money. So when, when we lose um, 50 or 75 or $100,000 from the county or city, in, a, in essence you're losing that number twice because the, the federal budget is also reduced by that. Right. I guess the, like you, you mentioned inviting officials to come and uh and ride, uh, at the question that was asked earlier, uh, your suggestion was call them, talk to them, tell them what the needs are. Well, you would, I, well I, we in PATS, we definitely have an interest in, in serving all of our clients, but when, when we are, get comments that, gee, you don't come out into the Reed Lanier community anymore, and, and, and I encourage, you know, I encourage the constituents to, to make that known to those decision makers who can, can, can affect are the allocation for public transportation mm -hmm. here within, within. And I always like to say McCracken County and Paducah. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have operating authority that was given to us uh, through the Kentucky uh, Transportation Cabinet, the Office of Transportation Deliveries, and our operating authority covers Ballard County, uh, Marshall County, McCracken County, and Northern Graves County. So within, within the confines of that, those are the areas that, we, if you're going to say, what, that we primarily service. We, we can initiate any, any mass transportation that lies within those borders. Now, uh, having said that, if we have to end up taking a client to Nashville, which we do quite often, to Louisville, to, to Norton's Hospital, hospital or to uh, COSERS, that's not a problem because we have a, that, that ride was initiated within our our transportation authority, right. so we can we can always go and retrieve our passengers. Right. In the uh, in the short time, what four months? No, uh, it seems like uh, four <laughs> months. Actually, my first day with uh, Paducah Transit was December nineteenth. Okay, December in, in that period of time, <coughs> with the, um, the the economy going as it's going and uh, gas prices going up now, have you seen any small increase in the number of riders on the bus? Are we taking advantage of it? I, I think the ridership is up slightly, and, and you know, but the vantage point that I have of making that judgment is not very good, and I will share with you why. Because during the Christmas holidays, there's a shorter period there, and even though more, there are more shoppers out, but there's a shorter period of clients who are taking the service that in, in January. I've looked at some of the, the data and statistics uh, on our ridership, and, and, and if I could say in a typical month, we, we have about 17,000 riders um, 
that's uh, somewhere in the vicinity, uh, the neighbor of about 12,000 that use what we call our fixed routes, which are the buses. And then we would have approximately 4,000 to 4,500 that are doing what uh, we call Medicaid. Those are individuals that are needing some uh, special treatment uh, right. through the Medicaid system. Then we have paratransit. And these are individuals that are not ambulatory. They are, they, they're needing assistance to get around. Right. And that ridership uh, approach is about 700 per month. Right. So, um, and that's, that's been pretty typical uh, of the data that I've seen since I've been there. Right. I've noticed that even on the, even on the city buses, um, arrangements are made for people who are in wheelchairs, uh, who are in mobile chairs. There are ramps that go yes. out and let those people roll on, special seating arrangements for them. Our, our transportation, uh, within our transportation system, we, we do meet uh, compliance with ADA, and that's saying that you know our rides, the buses are accessible to those individuals that are in wheelchair, those individuals that are, are, are have any of the, the disabilities that might would, you know, uh, classify them as, as having a, an ADA. Right. City bus goes to point A, and where you actually work is at point B, which requires riding your bicycle. You can actually put that bicycle. There's an attachment <laughs> made on the buses to put your bicycle in front of the bus. Of, uh, all of our buses are awesome. equipped with, with bike racks. And um, uh, our, our drivers, uh, while our drivers are not allowed to, to get out and assist in, in, in that rega uh, regards, but they certainly... Uh, they take their time. They know that you know there may be someone who's riding the bike that's not quite as strong or as they need to be. So they're they're never in too uh, in that, in that great of a hurry hurry that they can't uh, you know take the time to allow that him or her to secure their bike. Right. And, and, and the, the, the the rider doesn't necessarily drastically change the schedule. Uh, I, I noticed a, a time when um, you arrive at the station downtown and other buses are gone. That doesn't happen anymore. Is that something you stopped? No, I, 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 it is not anything that I stopped. I, I would like to say that I, I'm, I hopefully I'm bringing a degree of ownership to, to the job for every coworker there. Because I, I, I'm, I do believe that if I feel that I'm invested in it, then I take pride and I take a great uh, a greater part in, in what I'm doing. And so I, 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 I am attempting to bring that, that new, um, attitude, let's say, that uh, take ownership in, in, your, in your job. One of the things about uh, the buses, you know, they're on a, what I say, an hour cycle time. And I if a driver is running what we call coal, and it's better to run cold than hot. It's better to be a little behind the schedule because quite often many of the clients that are using, uh, uh, customers that are using the bus, they pretty much can say the bus should be at this particular point uh, at, at a specified time. So if you're running hot, you, 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 you stand the risk uh, of, of getting there sooner than the client. And now if you're running a little bit, I said a little bit cold, <laughs> if you're running very cold, they're gonna call and let you know that as well. But if you're running behind slightly, uh, within, the, within our vehicles, we, are, we have AVL, which uh, we can tell if uh, we can be there in the office, in the dispatch room and tell if, uh, if a particular bus is running hot and or cold. And then if a client, a customer calls and communicates that, we, we can then relay that to him. Gee, he's going to be, you know, he's about, he's, a, he's 60 seconds or he's a minute, and he's at this particular location and he'll be there very shortly. I've, se I've seen uh, some things that show particular caring in the things that, of course, bus is not going to wait at a stop for anybody, you know. But uh, an old dude can can run a block to to catch it. He won't take off and leave. If and they, uh, hopefully, if the drivers act, uh, see a customer coming, uh, he or she will take be courteous enough to not just pull off when you see a customer. I, during the midst of the uh, storm this past week. It, one of the drivers came in and she was all aghast. And I said, well, what's the problem? She said, well, I missed a client. I missed a client. One of her regulars that she knew, but in, in, in the storm and in the weather, she could sense that she thought she saw, but she wasn't for sure. And she, she, had, she had pulled away. And it really disturbed her that, you know, one of her regulars that she would normally pick up at this particular stop, 
that she didn't do it. And she's, you know, it's raining hard. And, and that's the kind of attitude that you want with coworkers. That you, you want them to, to care about their jobs. You want them to care about their clients right. because ultimately that's, that's our purpose. We're there to, to be a service to, to the clients, to the, to, to the ridership right. within McCracken, Paducah, Ballard, and Marshall County. Right. I've spoken often to, to a, a number of people over the years that I remember the time when Paducah had, Paducah had trolley cars, the cars with the electrical thing up mm -hmm. there and run, running on tracks. Mm -hmm. And all these years, nobody's ever remembered that. And then one day, on a bus, a driver remembered it. Absolutely. It had that. Well, mass transportation, uh, from the, the documents that I've seen, mass transportation for Paducah goes back to as far as 1870. Uh, and then uh, some private entities took over uh, the, the transportation, and that occurred or lasted till about 19, the, oh, the mid 1950s or thereabout. And ec hard economic times uh, drove them out of business. Now, a as we are organized and structured today, we were created by, by the by the city of Paducah in an ordinance that dating, I believe, it was in 1980. Uh, whether we began operations in uh, February of 1981 under uh, uh, Kentucky Revised uh, stat Statute 96. So we, as it's, as it's operating today, we've been around since about 1981. Um, right. and, and as I say, we, the, the authority is, is part of Paducah and also part of McCracken County. Uh, we're governed by, by a board of directors uh, that is appointed by the mayor of the city of Paducah. Uh, uh, the, the, the mayor appoints the board and it's approved by the city commissioners. And, and that, that's, you know, that, there's, there's an opportunity there. Uh, I had a discussion with, Ju with Judge Newberry and you know, one saying, Judge, it's critical that we, we, we get your support. We need your support. And he, he assured us that he would look at and see what he could do. But he, he felt, and uh, rightfully so, that, you know, uh, Arthur, if we're going to support, we need, we, need a, we need a voice in, in, in that as well. So uh, it, while I cannot make any assurance, I would love to be able to see, you know, while the board is appointed by the mayor, I'd love to be able to see some collaboration in those appointments between those officials right. so that each feels, as I said before, ownership, when you feel like you are vested in something, it, it, it makes you feel uh, that much better about what's going on. Exactly. And so I, I certainly could understand Judge Newberry's uh, vantage point that, you know, he would like to have some vesture, uh, uh, some dialogue about who was appointed to the board. But that's, that's how true. we're governed. Mm -hmm. um, quilters are coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a meeting today relative to that, yes. <laughs> I wonder. I know things are being are being considered and planned and what have you for um, for handling that that situation. Um. Ironically, uh, Jimmy, we we won't do that much different when the quilters are here for a couple of reasons. Our routes are called fixed, okay. uh, and 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 we it's pretty much mandated by the state that you you don't begin deviating those routes. Uh, but so uh, when, when the quilters are here, uh, the operations manager, who's uh, tremendous, has been a tremendous help to me, Don English was, was meeting today with the, uh, I, I'm going to say, the, the, quilt, uh, the quilters out at the Civic Center. And that was one of the things that he was meeting with them about uh, uh, what we could and could not do with the trolley service uh, within that. We're going to be, um, we're going to get it as close as possible without deviating our yeah. schedule <laughs> to accommodate uh, the quilters because they're vital too. They're 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 a vital part uh, of the community. Mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a large influx of uh, of economic uh, capital for the community. But more 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 importantly, we want everyone that has an experience with Paducah Transit to walk away feeling like, gee, I really got great service. Sure. So anything that we can do to 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 expound and, and upon that. We will certainly do uh, under the guys that we still have regulations that uh, that we have to adhere to. Um, some of those regulations we've gotten, you know, we kind of got a hand slapped about running charter services. Well, being a public entity, 
we're not allowed to compete with anyone that's private. So that's why you see all of the various buses that you see. You, I, I, I've had questions, I've fielded questions today about, well, why doesn't Paducah Transit do that much uh, more when there are large tourist attractions here in town? We, we can't compete if, if, if a private company wants to say, we want to bid on, on running buses for the, that event. Uh, we're, we, we are not allowed to, co to, compete, to compete against them. And, and they would so be able to? They could do that? Yes. That, that's okay, let me write down a number you call for <laughs> <laughs> But now, only, it's only if, 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 a, if a private company says that we don't want to do that, right. then we can write, uh, we can address that with the state and say that there's an affair going on, uh, right. the private industry doesn't want it, uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully they would, I think they would grant us permission to do it. But right. by and large, that, you know, there's so much of what we do that's regulated uh, that we have to comply with that. And right. there's, there's, like I mentioned earlier, there's so much that goes on uh, underneath. You know, you don't see the, the maintenance problems and keeping those things running. Somebody's got to get paid to do that. They have to, they can't just be any fly by night off the street mechanic. It has to be someone that's knowledgeable and expert at that. It costs uh, money. It costs money. One, uh, uh, one, of our, one of our goals is to improve our operational efficiencies. Right. Um, and, and, and that's from top to bottom. Uh, there's not a, we have, we have right size, for want of a better term, our staffing. Uh, I think that uh, those that have been around the community for some time you can probably recall when uh, the employment level at Pat's maybe approached 150 or so individuals. Uh, as I said here today, our employment level is at 69 total, uh, of which we, we, we have about four mechanics that uh, they keep the vehicles running. Uh, we have uh, a, a number, I, if I sit here right now, I would say we have approximately 50 drivers. Not all of those are, are, are full-time. Right. We have some part-time drivers, and that's what they desire. They just they want something to keep them active. Right. And, and then we've got a staff there of, of seven uh, dispatchers and, and CSR, those are individuals receiving phone calls and, and scheduling the rides and, right. and the rest of the office administration. Well, the buses touch uh, pretty much every corner of the city. You can get to it, to pretty much every corner of the city. And, and I would suggest go to, go to X Point and, and walk. I, I've read signs downtown on buildings, historical type things, about when this started and when this building was erected and why and by whom and all that. Mm -hmm. I've learned some things just in walking maybe three, four, five blocks or uh, uh, waiting for just a bit and taking a walk to get back to the station to catch a bus. I've learned a lot and I enjoyed it a lot. Get out there and ride them. It's fun. It, it really is. is. And the drivers are tremendous. I, I, I know that, th that, that, that what you do is, uh, is involved. I don't know that I could, but then we've got people like you, very honored that you came. Well, it's a pleasure. Appreciate it that you came. Maybe it's we'll talk to you again sometimes about it. Okay. Very I, honored. I look you forward here. to it. That's another goal is to, to increase the overall awareness of just Paducah Transit. Um, we want to increase the priority. Right. It allows it allows our older citizens, our citizens with disability, to live a, a, a more independent life. For and, sure. And that, that has, that's For a big sure. value. Get out there and ride it. Thank you, Mr. Boykin. Appreciate you coming. For Minority Focus, I'm Jimmy Moore.